In this video, we'll do an exam review of the lower motor neuron, their connections and interactions with the upper motor neuron. View an important exam question before we start the topic and get the answer after the topic is done. Question number one In what condition stretch reflexes are decreased? Are increased. Number two, why hypertonia occurs and what are different types of hypertonia? Number three, what are fasciculations and fibrillations and when do they occur? Now, lower motor neuron. Voluntary muscle movements depend on the lower motor neuron activity. They are the final common path between the CNS and muscles. So, where are these lower motor neurons? They are number one in the brain stem motor cranial nerve nuclei, number two anterior horn cells of the spinal cord and number three the axons of the peripheral nerves that innervates the skeletal muscles. The peripheral motor nerves that arise from the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord supply the muscles. This peripheral motor nerve has two types of motor neurons, number one alpha motor neuron and number two gamma motor neuron. So these are the lower motor neuron nuclei, the brain stem or the cranial motor nerve nuclei and the anterior gray horn cells of the spinal cord and the peripheral motor nerve that contains alpha and gamma motor neuron. Now alpha motor neurons. Alpha motor neuron cell bodies are in the brain stem and in the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord and they innervate the extra fusal fibers of the muscles. They are fast conducting large diameter myelinated fibers and their function is muscle contraction and gamma motor neurons innervate the intrafusal fibers are thinner and slow conducting fibers than the alpha motor neurons and what do they do they control the reflexes and muscle tone upper motor neurons of the cerebral cortex are connected and control alpha and gamma motor neurons of the spinal cord via descending corticospinal tract basal ganglia and the brain stem number 2 the sensory nerve is connected to the alpha neuron by interdential neurons or interneuron it also inhibits the alpha neuron so these are the wider ones alpha motor neurons innervating the extra fusal fibers and the thinner ones are the gamma motor neuron they innervate the intrafusal fibers the muscle and control muscle tone and reflexes whereas alpha motor neuron control the muscle contraction these are the corticospinal fibers and corticobulbar fibers they innervate the cranial nerve nuclei and the anterior gray horn and control them functions of the alpha and gamma neurons motor neurons are the connections between the cns spinal cord and muscle they innervate alpha motor neuron damage or disease causes inability to cause muscle contraction and causes muscle weakness, flexibility, paralysis and atrophy. The gamma motor neuron control stretch reflex and muscle tone. Brain areas that inhibit stretch reflex are motor cortex, basal ganglia, cerebellum and reticular inhibitory area. Brain areas that facilitate stretch reflex are reticular activating areas and the vestibular areas. So, motor cortex, basal ganglia, cerebellum and reticular inhibitory areas inhibit the stretch reflex by inhibiting the gamma motor neuron whereas brain areas that facilitate the stretch reflex are reticular activating areas and vestibular nuclei how upper motor neuron connected to the lower motor neurons the upper motor neuron that arise from the motor cortex pass through the internal capsule the pyramidal tract cross over the lower surface of the medulla and control the activities of the anterior horn of the spinal cord and the lower motor neurons from where the peripheral nerve arises and act on the skeletal muscle at the neuromuscular junction by producing acetylcholine. So this is the corticospinal tract which cross over 
at the low surface of the medulla forming the pyramidal tract. Other is extra pyramidal tract which do not cross here and they control and inhibit the anterior gray horn and the cranial nerve nuclei. So what are the effects of upper motor neuron lesions on the lower motor neuron? Upper motor neuron are inhibitory to the alpha and gamma motor neurons and interruption in the upper motor neuron as occurring in stroke. Most common site is internal capsule causes spasticity, hypertonia and hyperreflexia. So if there is damage to the upper motor neurons here in the internal capsule, they cannot control the anterior ancillary spinal cord. That causes spasticity and hypertonia because of the continuous activity of the alpha and gamma motor neurons. So that number two, continuous uncontrolled activity of the gamma motor neuron causes increased muscle tone and reflexes, whereas that of alpha motor neuron causes muscle spasm. So the muscle spasm is more common in the flexors and infarction in the internal capsule because they control the alpha motor neurons which cause muscle contraction. Now the lower motor neuron lesions, what do they cause? A lower motor neuron lesion as occurs in neuropathies and peripheral motor nerve injuries, they cause flexed paralysis, muscle atrophy, hypotonia, hyporeflexia, fasciculation and fibrillation. So upper motor neuron lesion causes hypertonia and hyperreflexia and muscle spasm whereas lower motor neuron lesion cause flexed paralysis, muscle atrophy, hypotonia and decreased reflexes. Interruption with the alpha motor neuron causes muscle flexidity and interruption with the gamma motor neuron activity causes loss of muscle tone and decreased reflexes. Now, uh, what are fasciculations and fibrillation? In lower motor neuron lesions, degenerated muscles become hypersensitive to acetylcholine. Spontaneous discharges from alpha motor neuron cause irregular contractions of the individual muscle fibers. So, degenerated muscle become hypersensitive to acetylcholine in lower motor neuron lesions and discharges from alpha neuron cause irregular contractions of the individual muscle fibers. This is known as fibrillation. Fibrillation cannot be felt or seen but they can be recorded by EMG whereas fasciculations are jerky visible contractions of the denervated muscle from spontaneous discharges of the spinal motor neuron. So fasciculations can be felt and seen clinically and recorded by EMG. So the difference between fibrillation and fasciculation is that fibrillation cannot be felt or seen but recorded recorded by EMG whereas fasciculations are felt and seen clinically and recorded by EMG and both of them occur in lower motor neuron lesions due to hypersensitivity of the muscle fibers to the acetylcholine. Now answers to the questions. In what conditions is stretch reflexes are decreased or increased. There are different conditions in which stretch reflexes are increased or decreased. Number one, they are increased in upper motor neuron lesion with positive Babinski, which is pyramidal lesion as occur in internal capsule most commonly. Number two, they are also increased in extra pyramidal lesion and in that there is negative Babinski. So the difference between pyramidal and extra pyramidal lesion is that of the Babinski which is positive in upper motor neuron and negative in extra pyramidal neuron lesion. Whereas number three they are decreased in lower motor neuron lesion with negative Babinski also. So the reflexes decrease in lower motor neuron lesions and number four reflexes remain normal in myopathy until late in the disease. In myopathy there is symmetrical proximal muscle weakness whereas in neuropathy there is distal muscle weakness. Now answer to question number two why hypertonia occurs and what are different types of hypertonia. The gamma efferent system controls the stretch reflexes and it is also modulated by descending tracts of the upper motor neuron but more by the extra pyramidal neurons. In upper motor neuron lesions gamma motor neuron activity is unchecked so it causes hypertonia. Brain areas that inhibit stretch reflexes are motor cortex as I already explained earlier, basal ganglia, cerebellum and reticular inhibitory area and facilitating areas are reticular activating areas and vestibular nuclei. So the different types of hypertonia that occur in up motor neuron lesions are number one, clasp knife rigidity 
when muscles are hypertonic continuous passive flexion causes increase in resistance due to stretching of the extensor muscles however when passive flexion is continued as an elbow joint and sufficient force is applied limb resistance suddenly decreases why because further stretching of the tricep muscle activates an inverse stretch reflex that relaxes the muscle so it's the inverse stretch reflex that re causes muscle relaxation in hypertonia and clasp knife rigidity the clasp knife rigidity is lengthening reaction where resistance decreases due to lengthening of the muscle in passive flexion moderate stretch causes muscle contraction and a strong stretch causes muscle relaxation due to activation of inverse stretch reflex the second increase in tone is ankle clonus when muscles are hypertonic sudden maintained dorsiflexion of the foot by the examiner causes rhythmic plantar flexion of the ankle this is known as ankle clonus it's a series of involuntary rhythmic contractions and relaxations of which muscles of the gastrocnemius muscle due to what due to stretch reflex inverse stretch reflex consequence in a stretch reflex inverse stretch reflex when discharges are increased the intrafusal fibers are shorter than the extrafusal fibers so a stretch increases the rate of discharges of the alpha motor neuron increase gamma activity initiate inverse stretch reflex ankle clonus may be caused by interruption of the upper neuron fibers for example it may occur in a stroke multiple sclerosis hepatic failure or serotonin syndrome a patellar clonus is due to contraction of the quadricep muscle so ankle clonus due to contraction and relaxation of the gastrocnemius muscle and patellar clonus due to rhythmic contraction relaxation of the quadricep muscle now, these two were caused by the pyramidal tract lesion the extra pyramidal tract lesion produced two types of rigidity during the passive movement number 1 is cog wheel rigidity in cog wheel rigidity there is intermittent increase in the tone in passive movement when muscles are hypertonic continuous passive flexion causes start and stop movements throughout the range of motion of a joint as an elbow so trying extending the joint loses the resistance and relax and then resistance begin again so stop and start again second extra pyramidal neuron lesion rigidity is leg pipe rigidity in leg pipe rigidity there is uniform increase in tone in passive movement of the joints in both agonist and antagonist muscles for example flexor and extensor both are rigid so that it gives a uniform increase in tone that is known as leg pipe rigidity passive movement of an extremity causes plastic feeling resistance leg pipe rigidity affects neck arm leg rigidity in the back can lead to a stooped appearance and the patient complains of difficulty in turning in bed and arising from the chair question number 3 what are fasciculations and fibrillations as i already explained so i skip this both of them recorded by emg but fibrillations they cannot be felt or seen but fasciculations can be felt and seen clinically